Hello, one and all, and welcome back to Campaign 10 Divine Fervor. I am your host, as always, Verinity Void, and this here is the final part in this series. This is part 18. It has been a long time coming, or in some ways, it's been a rather short campaign. It's dependent depending on how you see it, but we have finally arrived in the mid-1800s, where we will conclude everything and anything. We have about 25 years to go through. We're going to go from 1840 to 1865, and that'll be that. 1865 is where I will show the rest of the map, all of the cultures and stuff, and we'll see what is what. We'll see some final stats and everything. Uh, any, If any wars are still going on, we're going to... We'll leave them as is. Anyways, I think for this final part, I should read off the national ideas of the one that has won North America. You know, because I think this is, that I was told early on when making this campaign that this was going to be like the final iteration of America, so... Oh, I'll read some of these more unhinged national idea descriptions that are based on the unhinged tweets of that one fucking Twitter account. So, the fifth national idea is... Seize the opportunity. America is extremely weak today with, the, with sleepy Joe Biden. He doesn't even know what is going on in the world. Now is the chance for Serbia to declare war on U.S. to take back our land. All terrorists and traitors will pay price for betraying us. Province war score cost minus 12.5%. What land did we take from Serbia? <laughs> That's my question. Unless they're talking about stuff in the Balkans. Okay, I, I guess. Repaying colonization is the sixth national idea. Europe has to pay Serbs for centuries of slavery of Serbian people. We are victims of European colonization. They stole our lands and put in Germans and Magyars. Look how many lands they stole from us. They did same with Kosovo and Shiptars. D development cost minus 10%. I, I'm not exactly sure what Shiptars are. I don't think I want to know. I, I don't think I do. The seventh national idea, the final one, is a new Serbian Empire. I will become leader of new great Serbian Empire, which will defeat all fake countries made by Jesuits. It will be entire continent, and God has given it to us and chosen me as leader. Morale of armies plus 15%. And the final national, or the, the, the ambition of America, is hostile core creation cost on us plus 45%. Ay, God... I don't know why this this Twitter account exists still, but, you know, I, I, I've i given up trying to understand it. I have just accepted that it is a, it is a thing. I, <laughs> I don't want it to be a thing, but it's Twitter. It's, it's, a, it's the Wild West over there. I'm not going to question it. I don't even use Twitter. I don't have a Twitter. Uh, Hawaii is still going after Vitilevu, Dundar, and Armenia going after Muscovy, Hassa, and the Cossacks. And Li Yue is going after Guanseo still. Which, uh, you know, it should be fairly simple unless Guanseo is allied to... No. Where is your... Ah. Well, you need to march people over if you can. There it is. Gua uh, Guanseo looks as if it is about to be fully annexed. But uh, Li Yue may need to dedicate more troops over here. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not entirely sure. Because I don't think that army can take on the army of Guanseo. <laughs> what? Well, hold on here. What's that morale? Is that bankruptcy? It's bankruptcy. Oh, no. Oh, no, Guanseo. I didn't think you were bankrupt. Oh, shit. <laughs> Never mind. They are not fully annexed. They are merely a vassal. It's kind of weird, those. 
Po Wo was a, as a vassal of Sumru and Guan Seyo as a vassal of Li Yue. So, okay. Hawaii, you gotta land troops on Viti Levu if you want to take out their troops. I hate these national ideas. Mostly because it's of of the the tradition and how they named it Fijian Canoe. And it's not Fijian traditions. Because that broke when that when these came out, the Pacific Tags, I think they were like imported or whatever, they collaborated with some mod on the Steam Workshop. And I guess the collaboration brought in those national ideas for those Pacific Tags where the localization just broke with the tradition of like right over here. Colombian traditions. What is over here? La Platin traditions. Although it's Sulaset, you know. You know what I mean. Uh America. Illinois Illinoisian uh, traditions. Or over here. Fucking Haitian traditions. It all has traditions at the start. But not for like Fiji and all that. No, those, these new Pacific tags are like Fijian canoe or great mines of whatever. It it annoys the hell out of me as someone who makes national ideas extended and has done legitimately over 400 different national idea sets. Like, I, just, I don't like I don't like that kind of change. But that's just a nitpick of me. That's just it's whatever. I'm gonna sip my water as we wait to see what happens next. Uh, the next war between Mondstadt and Livonia is not available until 1852 unless Mondstadt attacks Aktemachi or Salento. Uh, part two has Mzab. Mm. Lunda is allied with Denmark. Mahafali, not allied with anyone, but they have the Roswe dynasty. Semyon, not allied with any, or they are allied with Partu. And they are a theocratic empire under Kohen Gadol Gideon the Ninth. And then Satavahana has a 666. Good shit. Vononeria, allied with Liyue. Vononeria is in a very strong position. Uh, so long as Sumuru does not direct their attention southward. Mm, mm, what is this? The Japan... Oh no, Japan. Why? Why would you go after Koryak? What did they do to you? So you're at war with Koryak and Iheri. And I have a feeling that if Japan dedicates everything they can to Iheri... Japan will win. Ihri has one military tech advantage, but Japan has way more troops on the field and way more manpower. Hmm. And the fortress over here at Korchin is going down. Koryak is doing some work over here. If Ihri... Oh, actually, actually, oh, ooh, I forgot Li Yue is in this. That's why there's occupations here. Li Yue is going to be doing a number on Ihiri. But in essence, Ihiri is facing an enemy with about three, three and a half times as many troops. Which is very, very bad. And uh, I th if Ihiri gets taken down, you know, Japan is... <laughs> Japan is gonna run over Koryak, and Koryak is just gonna be completely annexed at that point. Which will be unfortunate. Koryak is trying, but against Japan, it's just not, it's just not enough. They're, they're even one military tech ahead, but the quantity just isn't there. The profitability from Siberian provinces it just can't match uh, their neighbors, unfortunately. I wish the Evenk Daur Federation was still alive, honestly. I feel like them, I feel like they would have been a nice ally for Koryak, but they got partitioned. Early on, they got partitioned. Dundar is large and in charge. The Gurids are small and shriveling. Armenia might succumb to 
revolutionaries. The papacy is chilling out. Any other wars? Yeah, we got a few. Uh, Satavahana, Maratha, Sumeru, and Pangasinan and Powo are going after Dundar once again. Oh no! And this time, Sumeru and Satavahana are more than capable, more than ready to take over Northwest India. The Gangetic Plain is wide open. The Indus River, wide open. Oh, Dundar, where did it all go wrong? I think it's you not embracing those revolutionary ideas. In fact, let's see where the revolution is spreading. <clears throat> it's actually spread quite a bit throughout uh, Southeast Asia. In the islands over here, the Spice Islands, and a little bit into Australia. It's throughout the Middle East. It's very prevalent in the Middle East. Ihiri has taken on a lot of it. Has uh, Japan? They were under the effects of revolution, the, the revolution disaster last time I checked in on them at the end of the last part. But I guess they came through it and they have squashed any revolutionary sentiment in their lands for now. The revolutionary sentiment can come back, just you wait. <clears throat> But as we go forth, Dundar is getting run over. Ihiri is putting up a mighty defense. <clears throat> and depending on how how distracting these revolutionaries are, uh, they may get a Ihiri may get a little bit of a reprieve, but that's not going to stop Koryak from well, succumbing to the Japanese invasion. To retake the capital, they need about 9,000 and Koryak they can't do anything, and they just folded. They are now a tributary of Japan. <clears throat> so, it was basically... A, not, it wasn't. A, I would say it's a complete victory for Japan, but it is enough of a, of a victory that they, like, they own the entire eastern part of Siberia, and they have... <clears throat> They have put themselves more into Manchuria. Ihiri is just... They can't do anything. Not against Japan. They may still be able to put up a fight against, like, Li Yue. But... Japan is too much of a, of a power now. <clears throat> I need to drink some water. Uh, I think I was, I think I was stressing myself out over fucking other shit going on around me, but whatever, whatever. Dundar is getting divvied up. They are lo they're losing rapidly, and this wasn't even started by Sumeru. Satavahana started this, and Satavahana is going to take what it wants. <clears throat> Who's revel? Wait, who? Oh, that's Lebanon. Oh, no, is it? Oh, that's Revolutionary Mzab. <clears throat> Something is stuck in my throat. That's why I'm clearing it so much. I fucking... I don't know what... Uh, maybe I'm getting sick. I hope I'm not getting sick. Ugh. Terrible. Terrible. Uh, what else? I know the what's it called the uh, I know the papacy can't embrace the revolution. I what what what's the uh, what's what does it say again? <clears throat> the Holy See will never embrace the revolution. <laughs> you will never you will never see the Pope embrace these heinous revolutionary sentiments. Uh, that's just funny to me. Uh, Revolutionary Iran Shahar, still alive and doing well. Satavahana and Sumeru have pieced out Dundar and, well, they've gained a lot of land, including most of Tibet for Sumeru and most of uh, Rajasthan for Satavahana. Truly, it is the day of the revolution 
here within the subcontinent. And Barat was annexed too. I, that was just a click, a click, a quick war, I suppose. Any other wars going on? We have the Second Volonarian Sufanberi Imperialist War. So this time Volonaria is seizing the initiative and tackling Kamai while they are at their weakest. Which is, honestly, it, that, that's a good call. The last time we saw Kamai attacked Volonaria in an Imperialist War, Kamai was getting their ass handed to them. Even though, well actually this war isn't even directed at Kamai, but Kamai is allied to, uh... Oh no, they have the tributary of Sufanburi. But, uh, eh, this guardian here, supposed guardian of Sufanburi, is doing a very poor job of it. Oh lord, Sufanburi, how did it end up like this? Oh, Kamai, how did it end up like this? There's peace. Sufan Buddy has been annexed. The advisor cost stacking nation is no more. And Volonaria grows ever stronger. Yep, they annexed a lot of land in that. Or, well, like, not, I wouldn't say a lot, but a decent chunk of land. And Kamai gets ever weaker. Their only saving grace is that they are allied with Japan. What else do we got? Revolutionaries rising up in Dundar. Any wars? No wars. I'm shocked. Uh, I'm gonna see the uh, the age abilities real quick. I think I changed them. I should have changed them. Administer the world? Yes, okay. Because normally, like, administer the world gives, like, plus 50% admin efficiency, which is fucking crazy. But with the changes I made... It is only plus 10% administrative efficiency. Um, and same with, uh, it was a few, there was a few others I had to change around. Uh, in previous campaigns, because there was one campaign I remember in particular where, uh, there was an age ability that gave Siberian Frontiers to those who claimed it. And that was fucking insane. <laughs> so, we are never having that again. Never. No free Siberian frontiers. That was that was broken, at, like legitimately broken. Yeah, Yoy will try to like push the limits and all that, but that was an in-game mechanic that I was unaware of. That was uh, that just too much, too much. It's only a matter of time before Cascadia is attacked once more. Part two, you're chilling out. Dundar is going after Armenia. Well, oh, okay. Yeah. That's the last of Armenia. Well, besides this province right here. Lebanon can take this. But uh, Dundar will be stretching toward the Caspian Sea, I guess. That, that, uh, that peace treaty with Monstad is almost up, Livonia. It's almost there. The Orenberg Cossacks still allied to the Gurids. Takigawa has no allies. Toyotomi, no allies. And they are, a they are a republic. A constitutional republic. Shit. Okay. I see you. Kutai. Pangasinan. You are an eastern plutoc plutocracy still. Ternate. I'm just curious if Salento's colony is going to gain independence, or if Japan's colony is going to gain independence. Uh, because Ru or Japanese Australia, they're very behind in military technology, but they have a big backer in Sumeru. Um, Salento's Australia is more on par with technology, and they have more backers. Strangely enough, J Japan. That's... I'm guessing Japan wants this colony to be friendly with their colony. I, it would be an independent one, though. I don't know. I don't know. Strange, strange backers, strange people supporting independence movements and all that is... I don't know. 
Hawaii is just relaxing and chilling. Ho they lost to Viti Levu, so Viti Levu has a little bit more land. It's just Hawaii, you, you gotta transport troops. It's that simple. I know you can do it. Maybe you're just a little bit more shy compared to Japan doing it. I have no idea. Revolutionary Armenia is here, but they're still getting manhandled by uh, Dundar. Revolutionary Lebanon. Sangvisferi is still somehow alive. I, I don't know how they're alive. Even though they're allied to Lebanon, that's not an impenetrable alliance by any means. Livonia can take on Lebanon. We've seen that before. Uh, Akhtimachi going after Viti Levu. I, I doubt that's going to do anything. And then Lebanon trying to clean up the rest of Armenia. So, partitioning Armenia. How, uh... Not pertinent to the to uh, modern or near modern day uh, politics. I feel like I'm getting flashbacks. Dongola, do these uh, OPMs do they have any allies? Makuria, nope. Dongola, nope. The Mamluks, nothing. Which is kind of weird. I thought they. I would think, like you two would at least try to ally each other. You're both Sunni. The Mamluks, I can see not getting an ally, but you two are you two are the same religion. What's the going on? <clears throat> what do the revolutionaries in the papacy get? Like if they if they enforce their demands? Ah, uh, they faith becomes so they just they just get a new a new ruler. Is that it? Do the revolutionaries, like, do you just get a new pope who's, like, more liberal in policies? Which, <laughs> that would be really weird. I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to see that happen now. Just, like, the revolutionary rebels break the papacy and then enforce their demands. What happens? What kind of policies does that new pope uh, bring forth? Does the revolutionary pope... Uh, still wear the papal tiara? Li Yue actually stretching into the Tarim Basin. They might go after Dun. No, 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 never mind. Uh, Sumeru is straight up just saying, Hey, I want that nice delta right over here. This, these, this nice, you know, trade port. Natural harbor here at Bangkok. Uh, Vononeria, you need to pay up. And I said Vononeria was in a strong position so long as Sumeru did not take eyes at them. And uh, that's exactly what Sumeru has done. <laughs> so, Li Yue, I salute you in trying to hold off Sumeru, but um, you and Vononeria are going to have one hell of a time doing that. And Satavahana is not even called into this. This is all just Sumeru. Right? Oh, Pangasinan and Powo. But, I mean, Pangasinan isn't too much of a factor. It is mostly Sumeru doing the heavy lifting. Like, 80-90% of the lifting. What other wars do we got? Yep. It's 1853. That makes sense. The truce was up in 1852. So, Mondstadt is going after Livonia and Salento. And it is... Salento's gonna be brutalized... And so is Livonia. Already got a Mare Nordstrom right here, man. You don't need more Livonia. I mean, not Livonia. Uh, Mondstadt. You don't need more. Uh, but as hungry as the beast ever is, they continue forth. Yeah, Emperor Stefano is going to be, uh... He, he's not home right now. He's... He's cowering. The papacy is going to gain land, I think. If Mondstadt is feeling generous. And Salento is going to lose, like, half of Italy. Like, uh... What's it called? Mondstadt has a lot of administrative efficiency. They are doing it just fine. And they will be able to take a lot of land. And also, Livonia was... <laughs> They were in the middle of attacking, of attacking Dundar as Mondstadt declared war. That's just bad timing. 
Livonia, you knew exactly when the truce was going to be up with your arch rival. So I don't even have, I don't have sympathy here. You timed this very poorly. And Li Yue is occupying Pangasinan's land. But Sumeru is making quick work of Volonaria's possessions in Southeast Asia. Volonaria, you're going to need to really rally together with Li Yue and like formulate something because the longer you give Sumeru to, to take this land over here by Bangkok and then go into Li Yue, the worse it's going to be. Consolidated Sumeru armies are your worst nightmare. Case in point, right fucking here. <laughs> Sumeru is consolidating their armies and they are running a train through you. It's just, uh, it's just how the cookie crumbles, I guess, with, uh, <laughs> Le uh, Sumeru doing Sumeru things. You know, they may have had a setback early on in the 1400s by uh, taking Pegu and then losing to Sufan Buri. Uh, but but Su uh, Su uh, it's Sumeru is just way too powerful now. Holding the Bengal Delta is just so, so good for them. Salento, basically fully siege down. Sure, they got possessions here in the Middle East. They're nowhere near as lucrative as the stuff in Italy and Macedonia. Or, I mean, Greece. Like, y you know Salento is suffering big time each month that uh, this stuff is occupied. And it's the same with Livonia. Like, more than, ha more than half of Livonia, like, their development is occupied right now. And Livonia is not putting up any sort of fight. There is no armies opposing Mondstadt. Kind of tells you where the priorities are. Dundar can't defend themselves. That's just plain and simple. Dundar has given up, in all senses, to Livonia. So Livonia is just saying, hey, I'm going to focus on what I can win. Mondstadt, whenever you're ready for peace, just send me the peace deal. I will sign it. I'm I'm fucked. <laughs> That's basically what what has what it, what is occurring here. Cause that war score is going up going up past 80 really fucking quick. And uh Dundar, what is is this an imperialist war? It is an imperialist war. So Dundar's capital is where? It is over here at Yangi Hisar. And Sumeru, have you pieced out Li Yue? You have not. So Li Yue is still fighting Sumeru actively. And they're losing. The manpower of Li Yue is almost drained. The manpower of Vononeria is almost drained as well. Sumeru has been tr trying some poking and prodding into the Malay Peninsula. But Vononeria is pushing them back. However, you know Sumeru has... More where that came from, Vononeria. You better be careful. This revolutionary uh, republic is by no means something to be trifled with. Case in point, right here. Sumeru doesn't have the discipline, but fuck, they got the morale. And uh, Vononeria has the tactics. If you can't match the morale of Sumeru, you're done. It's that simple, Vononeria. And you're learning that lesson the hard way. Mahafali is at war with Mutapa, trying to defend, but I'm, unfortunately I don't think Mahafali is going to be able to do much. Revolutionaries rocking Japan back and forth. So, despite Japan going through a revolutionary disaster, uh, they are still suffering greatly under, you know, revolutionary armies just rising up, trying to take hold of the government still. Mondstadt has successfully won again against Livonia. And just look at how much they took. Just look at that. I'll zoom out for you. That is some intense shit. Livonia no longer has a port on the Arctic Ocean or anything. Livonia's only ports are at the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. This is an... <laughs> Mondstadt is just 
running rampant. And the papacy, hey, they got some land back. The ca uh, the Catholics are rejoicing. Especially since, you know, the Catholicism's biggest state is uh, leading the charge eastward. How's it going over here, Sumeru? They're steadily pushing into Li Yue. Li Yue's army is slowly dwindling down. It's not, a, it's not like, or like a blanket siege of Li Yue, but it is just like a, a slow burn against, against Li Yue, unfortunately. Japan, Jesus Christ, what is going on with your rebels? Uh, they would, yeah, they would change to a republic. But it does not seem like Japan is ready to, uh, they're ready to concede. You got rev uh, re rebels? Oh. Mm. There's an icon missing. Koryak, Revolutionary Yang. Oh, these are tributaries. Got it. Hawaii is a little bit rebellious, though. They are a little bit uh, uppity. And then Sumeru has pieced out Li Yue. I don't think they gained any land. No, no land was exchanged. So now, with Li Yue successfully out of the war... Uh, Sumeru can focus on Vononeria. In fact, that's what they're doing. They're sieging down uh, Selangor right now. I'm very curious how much of Vononeria is going to be lost. Or, is this an imperialist? No, it's of Ayutthaya. So the war score is going to be heavily favored to Sumeru, since the war goal can be seized uh, in full. I'm not sure if Sumeru's navy can take on Vononeria's. Never mind, it absolutely can. Uh, <laughs> Sumeru has like triple the naval force of Vononeria, so I was wrong to, un to underestimate their power. Revolutionaries seem like they're going to take over Pangasinan. So peace is had in Southeast Asia, and well, the major trading center, the major trading, like, rivers have been successfully monopolized by uh, Sumeru. The only one left that they need, that they should really take over is the Mekong River, which flows through Khmer. If they can take over the Mekong River, oh my god. Like, Sumeru will have completed their objective of Southeast Asia. Wow, Livonia took over a bunch of Dundari land. Look at that. It must have been really cheap for them. Holy shit. As much as land as they lost over here, they make up for it with land over here. I mean, sure, it's not as profitable. It's not as well-developed land, but... There's life in Livonia. There is life in their body yet. Mondstadt, uh, I guess relations broke down with the papacy? No, 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 no. So they are, they went to war with Part II. Uh, Fontaine has joined in, the papacy joined in, and so did Semyon. Which means the papacy is now at war with the biggest cat, or the, the papacy is at war with the biggest Catholic state in the world. Tell me how that goes for you, Pope uh, Pope Clemens the Fourteenth. I don't think you're gonna very much like it. And also, um, part of two, yes, there is an unguarded port over there. In fact, uh, I can see why it's unguarded. Uh, Mondstadt has double the amount of ships you have, which is, it's not good. It's, 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 it's not ideal, I would say. Also, I'm going to see Sangvisferi. Please tell me where the final institution spawned. It spawned in Saint-Dominique. Yes, that is imperialism, injecting a nice bit of monarch points into Fontaine's territory. So, Fontaine is currently fighting against, uh, what's it called, Mondstadt, but... Fontaine isn't going to do anything if, it, if they know what's good for them. They will stay on their island and they will let Part 2 get wrecked. Like, there's no other... There's no other correct term other than just getting wrecked, because... Mondstadt just does that to anyone they target. There's no way you are just... You're taking down Mondstadt. 
And we only have about five more years in this campaign. Only five more years. Well, about six, but, you know, 1865. Mahafali, are you still? Oh, wow. <clears throat> Part two, I guess, did a quick war against Mutapa. Because I think they... Yeah, they annexed a little bit more land. Uh, over here in the Congo. Over here in East Africa as well. It wasn't a whole lot of land, but... Sizable chunks taken away from Mutapa. Pate was also released from Mutapa. I wonder what's going to get released from Part two, though. Because Mondstadt is not going to have any mercy. They are running out of manpower, though. It's kind of crazy, though. Like, 300,000 manpower is low for Mondstadt. <laughs> Versus most anyone else. Like, 300,000 manpower? That's fucking great! They are swimming in manpower, but no. No, not, not Mondstadt. That's low for them. The ledgers are, in, are a little bit shaky at that point. And also, Simeon is actually... They seem like they want to help out. Well, you, Yeah, you are in this. You, you should be doing something. Part 2 is getting slaughtered. Are you going to help? Maybe not, I guess. I, I, Even uh, Mondstadt is going over to the papacy and just being like... You, you, you've had it too good for too long. You've chosen the wrong side. Get the fuck over here. You're not done. Is it even a contest? No, it isn't. Look at look at that morale. Just look at that. 14.1. And the papacy, 8.65. <laughs> it's, it's, it's no contest. It's no fucking contest. This is... This is insane. Duck, what have you created? What have you created? Japan is going after what? Oh shit. Sumeru is now going after uh Sumeru is going after Kamai. And Kamai is allied to Japan. So Kamai, I mean uh Sumeru is basically doing exactly what I said they should. They're trying to monopolize the Mekong River. And well, complete their conquest of Southeast Asia. Jesus Christ, what did you do to Pangasinan? When was this war? What? How, how did... Something must have happened. There must have been some sort of weird event or something where Pangasinan offered up to be... was offered to be annexed into Sumeru. Something like that, I guess. I don't know. And it went through and Pangasinan's land went to Sumeru. I don't know how, I don't know what event that was, but that's like the only reason I can see Sumeru annexing all of this and all of this in one go and no sign of Pangasinan still being around. That's my only guess. Some sort of event or trigger, because that's, that's a little much. And considering the naval AI for everyone but Japan has been kind of eh. You know, I just, something, something's up. Averton Separatists, par, uh, what's it called? Yep, Averton Separatists with English Separatists and East Anglian Separatists. Part 2 is disintegrating. Even West Africa is feeling the, the rumblings of Mondstadt. Semyon has peaced out. They don't want any part of this war. They... <laughs> They went to war with Lebanon before. They they was like, no. If, if that's what war with Lebanon is like, we can barely win that one. But Lebanon's enemy is like two times bigger. I don't want to fight that. I don't want to fight that at all. And I understand why they don't want to fight that. Li Yue is now trying to take out Dundar. And that, that might very well end in Dundar's full annexation. It's going to take a while, there, but three years left, I think people have, I think there's enough time. Wait, what? 
Yo, yo, Salento fucking went root revolutionary. Oh my goodness. Another one joins the cause. Another one joins the revolution for the evolution. God damn, I did not think Salento was going to go revolutionary, but hey, I guess when you get kicked because of Mondstadt, I can understand why. And now they're fighting against uh, their own colony alongside uh, the supporters of that colony, which are Lebanon, Armenia, Semyon, and Japan. Salento is uh in shambles that colony is going to gain independence like there's no there's no ifs ands or buts kamai and japan are liberating their own land from sumeru but sumeru is over here in japanese manchuria and they are they're doing a lot of work legit they're doing quite a bit of work the first forts have been taken and the korean peninsula is under threat as well as this fort here at aigun or yeah aigun japan you better do something. You're only unseaging Kamai's land. You're not going into Sumeru's land. Like, this is... You're just balancing out the scales while Sumeru is pushing the scales back down in their favor. It really is that simple. Can you really deal with the southeast juggernaut that controls the Bengal Delta... That controls the Bengal Delta that controls the Ero Irrawaddy River, that controls the uh, uh, the likes of Ayutthaya and Bangkok. Like, can, what can you do? Okay, okay. Oh, wait. Oh, Satavahana is brought in. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That's a whole new element in this because Satavahana is going to bring in a bunch of fucking troops. And Japan, I don't think you know what you're up against now. You're up against a whole bunch. Dundar has been pe- No, they're still at war. The U.S. is getting distracted or something. There was a push, but that push has been dissipated, I guess. Something. Lebanon is going into Salento, and they are- Or at least occupying Salento's Middle Eastern possessions. And... The- The, the burden of the revolution- or at least the boost that the revolution gives, I guess, is, uh, it's not enough. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Turda. Where's Turda? Oh, it's against Sangvisferi. Uh, so, Sa uh, so Moncha has declared war on Sangvisferi and Lebanon has joined in to defend them. Oh, Lebanon. <laughs> How wrong you could have been to defend Sangvisferi. Holy shit. As it was looking good when with your war against fucking Salento, you go ahead and side against Mondstadt and you have this have thus signed your death warrant. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Mondstadt's just swarming in. It's like, ah, finally, target practice. And yeah, they saw the writing on the walls. Like, Song Visferi, just just peace out. Just give them what they want. Just give them what they want. Oh goodness, Satavahana helping out uh, occupy Kamai once again. Sumeru still occupying Japan's land in Manchuria. It's uh, yeah, Japan just cannot seem to uphold their end of the bargain. As good as they have been. They've just been defeated every single time. Sumeru has too many numbers. And there's peace. Sumeru takes, taking some land in... Uh, around the... What is it called? The Bay of Beijing, I guess? Or the Bohai Sea? Right over here. And then Sumeru also... No, that was about it. Oh, no, 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 they did. They took land in the Philippines. In this final year of the campaign, Sumeru pulling out the stops and just going all in. They don't care. They're, they are... <laughs> they are relentless. As is Lebanon going in after Salento. Heavenly War for Independence is still going. <laughs> uh, Salento doesn't even have that many allies. No, they have 
shit for allies. I, that, that, there's no getting around it. Lebanon has terrible allies. Uh, America is going after Fontaine, but we can all tell how that's going to go. Colombia going after Salento for what? Saldinde? Where is that? Saldinde. Oh, okay. For some reason, Salento still has those provinces. Okay. Sure. Alright, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Final year. Final year. Oh, Salento. It might just be best to uh, give in to the demands. Give in. Because your capital is dead, I'm pretty sure, right? Yep, Salento is siege down, so... Oof. Brutal stuff. And Li Yue is still embroiled in that war with, uh... With Dundar. Uh, for, basically for control of, the uh, control of the Tarim Basin. But revolutionaries are keeping Li Yue's army tied down just a little bit. I'm gonna slow it down to speed 3 as we approach the end of this campaign. Kamai has been pieced out. A message has been sent, but... Uh, Sumeru has not taken any land from Kamai. Still, that is a huge statement against Japan that Sumeru is able to, uh... <laughs> Sumeru is able to basically 1v1 Japan and win. That, that was intense. That was very intense. And with that being said, it's the final month of the campaign. Let's slow it down to speed two. And there it is. Lebanon wins the war against Salento. Uh, Salento's colony is free and we have Australia, ladies and gentlemen. Before the campaign ends, we have Australia. It, it, granted, it is Japanese Shinto Australia, but still, it is an independent Australia nonetheless. And with that being said, December 31st, 1865, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for Campaign 10, Divine Fervor. This is your political map for the end of the campaign. Europe being effectively carved up in full by Mondstadt, Africa being carved up by Partu at first, but Mondstadt is also messing with things because Katsina was released as a result of the war previously. Mutapa at first coming out strong against the likes of Lunda and Mahafali and Pate, but unfortunately they, they were humbled by Partu. And Semyon doing very, very well. Uh, I would say this is probably the strongest Jewish state we have ever seen in any of campaign any of the campaigns. I can't remember if there was any previous campaign where a Jewish tag did this well, where they sustained their power and they they didn't get like uh, fully annexed and then released or anything like that. No, Semyon was independent completely throughout. So props to them for that. And then um, also the revolution completely fucking took off this campaign. Strongest revolution I've ever seen in a campaign so far. Uh, with one, two, three, four main drivers of said revolution. And, you know, I want to say too, strongest Japan we've ever seen. I have not seen a... Well, this is... This is quite the conundrum I would say, Mackie, if you're watching this, um, who's the real Koryak? Like, I'm not sure, but that's on you to decide, Mackie. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the strongest Japan we've ever seen. It had its ups and downs, but Shimabara, like, they did very well with uh, their naval landings, and they were allied with Vononeri at one point, it was off and on. And they were doing successful naval invasions of the Philippines, of Borneo, of especially Manchuria against Akechi, Yayusu, and Takigawa. Once that uh, navy of Japan's got going, 
it was completely fine for them up until um, when Sumeru finally came at them in this final part here. That was like the only complete loss Japan had, I would say. And uh, hey, independent Australia, folks. That's always cool to see. You know, I, I didn't expect them to finish that war before the campaign ended, but in the very final month, peace was had. And it's a Japanese Shinto Australia. Never forget that Denmark survived this entire ordeal on their new home over here. And uh, Akitemachi still survived too, don't count them out. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the New World, I'm surprised, my boys. The Rocky Mountain Rangers survived. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> that was a burp. Uh, but yeah, I'm surprised the Rocky Mountain Rangers survived, that Colombia and America were not more power hungry and they didn't attack them some more. Um, Colombia doing as well as they did was a, was very much a shock for me because uh, they they were just small and just, I, I did not think that uh, they would gain as much steam as they did. Average land over here, that where it was, and then easy LN, you know, duking it out over and over. That was very fun to watch, uh, especially after easy LN gained some uh, gained some momentum, as well as average land gaining some momentum, annexing their respective neighbors. Uh, but all of that was just kind of like a gladiatorial show <laughs> for America as they were gaining steam, eating like Otulibi and uh, the three counts or the three fires federation. Um, who else was up here? Uh, the United States of Albania. They were. <laughs> They really tried to survive, as well as 3488 uh, and Atlanta, you know. All of them were just struggling to survive as America was gaining steam. And also them ping-ponging between allies. Just, ugh. This is, I, I, I don't know if this is the last time we will see America, but maybe. We'll, who knows? Who knows? And then, uh, you know, Brazil, or Actemachu Brazil, whatever you want to say, being, like, sustaining itself. Legit, a colonial nation breaking away in the Americas and sustaining itself. And even allying the biggest fucking power there is. Uh, Mondstadt, you know? I didn't think that this was going to be that successful of a colony. And also, I gotta say, too, Sulaset making that comeback over the generations you saw at the beginning of this campaign how Kalchakui was taking on and eventually winning against Cajamarca up here and then Kalchakui touched over to Sulaset and they were despite being behind the technology Kalchakui was winning against Sulaset Kalchakui could have annexed uh, Sulaset if they played their cards better but as circumstances had it Sulaset was able to survive, was able to survive, consolidate their power, and push back and eventually annex Kalchakui. Which, that's some tenacity I did not think an American tag was gonna have. That is some intense just like holding out and then just waiting for the right time to get back on it. And not only that we also got some cool like vanilla tags and non-vanilla tags springing up uh we almost had east anglia show up like we also had Gaeldom, the isles ulster england uh cornwall fucking survived as well as uh what's it called the papacy survived armenia is still how still somehow alive but a vassal um and even iran shahar like what are you even doing here we also saw Bharat earlier, the Marathas are here, Socotra, they're usually around. And fucking Sumeru in Arabia of all fucking places, like... <laughs> uh, such a wild ride with this campaign, but... Yeah. yeah even, the, even the Cossacks, even the Cossacks survived. But, there were also casualties along the way, unfortunately. We have... Oh, we even have the Niv people here. I didn't even see that. They blend it in just a little bit. Nice. Uh, we had casualties along the way, though. We had Ket. We had um, the Evenk Dower Federation. Powo is still alive. They're revolutionary, but they're still alive. Um, we also had Yongning that was once here. 
as well as Tendai, I didn't forget Tendai, Inazuma, the Japan from the previous campaign, unfortunately was unable to edge it out this campaign. I think I said last campaign, yeah, last campaign. Inazuma was the, was the, uh, uh, was the Japan of the previous campaign. Chankebar, as well as Kolothuna duking it out over South India, and uh, also Malwa and Sin, I think Malwa was here, I think so. I can't remember exactly, but Sindh was definitely here. I'm surprised my boys, the Gurids, still survive as independent and also as their own starting religion. Also, I can't forget my boys, the Adrissids, and then Kravins' submissions that uh, unfortunately perished, that were Duvatsha. They perished on like Corsica or Sardinia, and then Sura perishing in North Africa as they tried to escape. And uh, Akdemachi is still alive, let it be known. They are a survivor in the shadow of Partu. And uh, yeah, I mean, there were many more along the way that got caught in the crossfire. Brandenburg, as well as uh, Koln, and then just a few others. I can't remember all of them, but Champagne, uh, Foix. There was, there's too many to name, but yeah. Let's go on to some uh, relig other map modes. So, biggest ca Catholic is of course biggest in Europe. That's no surprise. Coptic, it, uh, what's it called? Part two was initially Coptic, but they they flipped once they got released because the land was con the land they spawn on was converted to Catholic. A very diverse set of isles over here, Druid, uh, Celtic religion as well as Lalard, Rodnovery, or no, yeah Rodnovery is still over here with Sangvisferi, Romuva is spread around along with Orthodox, Sunni, it's just a mishmash of everything, just look at this. The only like real consistency is Mahayana, Malankara, as well as a little bit of Theravada, and then Hindu. Lots and lots of Hindu. <laughs> and lots and lots of Jewish. And a little bit of Bori. A little bit. Sani would be, like, more plain to see, but, you know, part two is over here with their Catholicism clouding the way. And over here, Malankara and Shinto with a bunch of stuff over here. Uh, Karmatian is over here because of Hawaii. And then we got some Protestantism because Salento. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, Salento. Uh, fetishist thanks to Vononeria. And that's really about it. Rodnovri thanks to Ihri. And I think, let's go take a look at the culture map mode. Yeah, this, but this is gonna be a very long part, but it's the final part of the campaign. I think it deserves to be a little bit longer than the rest. So in the uh, over here in Western Europe, I'll just click on some random ones and just comment on some random ones. Here's yours, Kravins. I know you're gonna want to see this. Part two, or part uh, two's culture, Akdemachi's culture, Duvachin really spread around. Uh, Sura's culture, and then we got some outliers intruding in. Got some Moroccan culture here, as well as some Catalan, and then some Gascon. Icelandic has invaded the uh, the Isles, thanks to Averton. Cornish spread around, Irish spread around, you know. Lots of Norwegian, a little bit of Danish, the German culture groups. Surprisingly, the primary culture of Mondstadt, not that spread around. As much, the, the AI did not do as much culture converting as I thought they would. Lots of Etrurian though, thanks to Reitia. And then Umbrian, along with Piedmontese over here. Neapolitan over here, thanks to Salento. Plenty of Greek, of Greek culture. You can thank Anatolikon for that. Lots of Gothic culture, thanks to Theodoro termed Bosporus. Latvian culture spreading around very nicely. Romanian, Ruthenian. Omani, thanks to Muscat, who was, remember, diplomatically isolated because they were a very different religion than their neighbors. Got some Siberian tr uh, cultures, Kanti, remember Ket was around here as well. 
You have Afghan over here. Got some Syrian. There's not much Turkic, uh, Turkish culture left. Even got some Neapolitan culture around here because of fucking Salento. Jesus Christ. Assyrian culture still slightly spread around in West Africa. We've got Mosi Anakan, Hausa, Lund, lots of Lunda culture thanks to the blossoming of Lunda. Shona culture spreading thanks to Mutapa, Malagasy, and Swahili. You know, Pate was, was over here. Sidamo and Amhara taking over. Muscovite thanks to Muscovy, which unfortunately Muscovy perished in this part. I, I think it was this part. Uh, Persian culture, not very prevalent though, but Afghan culture, still around thanks to the Gurids. Kashmiri culture, spread around thanks to Hunza. Despite Hunza perishing early on, their legacy lives on in Kashmiri culture. And Rajasthani, spread around, Telugu, Tamil, what is this, Tibetan culture. Was this... I think that was Sufan Bari. Was it? I don't know. I'm not sure who was Tibetan culture and who colonized right here. I got Bengali, but Tibetan. I got the Japanese cultures, which... I'm not Japanese. <laughs> the Chinese cultures, which have shrunk. Uh, probably because of uh, the Japanese that were exiled from the Thunderdome spreading around, you know? Uh, lots of Korean culture because uh, Guan Seo was exiled as well. Kamai spreading their culture along the Mekong River. Vononeria spreading Jurchen culture. And lots of other stuff over here on Sumatra. Lots of other stuff. You got like what? Akinese as well as, what is this? Sumatran. And you got Sorbian because of Enusulafka. I have not forgotten them. And then we got Filipino culture, of course, with Bornean, even some Saigoku, Japanese mingling over here, Javanese, Sulawesi, and of course, you know, the Japanese culture spreading around because, hey, the Thunderdome popped off like we wanted it to. It was fun to watch. I really enjoyed watching it, and I, I think a lot of you did too. And some Italian culture as well. And Ivenk, even Japanese people in Siberia. And what else do we got? What else? Oh yeah, that's right. Omani culture, thanks to Hawaii. Some good stuff. And some Maori culture too, which is accepted in Hawaii. Viti Levu was actually, they were successfully invaded. All right. So, Akdemachi did what Hawaii could not and success successfully invaded success successfully invaded Viti Levu. And I think that's really about it for the culture groups. Oh, we didn't look at the Americas. Oh my goodness. Well, there's Calchaquis culture and Cajamarca's Sulaset Finnish culture with some Patagonian and Horpe. Akdemachi culture really spread around, as well as tu uh, Tupinamba, thanks to Potiguara. Gi culture, and then Tupinamba. Platinian, thanks to Colombia. And then Cornish, because Corn Cornwall used to have a colony over here that was pretty prominent. Uh, it's called Fontaine's main culture of Francian spread pretty nicely, but it also transformed into Louisianan culture. Gascon culture is here because there was a uh, Foix's colony of uh, the Antilles was, was here. Neapolitan culture because Salento had a colony over here. Yucatec, as well as Highland Mayan, EZLN, as well as Cocomes. Tlapanek from Tlapanek, you know, the tag. Uh, there is some Danish culture though here in the New World, and as well as Icelandic and Norwegian, Norwegian from Svendale, and as well as Danish because Denmark did have a colony over here. Tepic from, I can't, uh, was it Tonala? Tonala was the tag over here. Saxon, thanks to Average Land, Neapolitan, once again, Salento's work. And then Platinian from Colombian, Serbian, you know why. You know why there's Serbian culture here. 
and then Cree, as well as Anishinaabe. I think I pronounced that correctly. Uh, Three Fires Federation, you are not forgotten. Your cultural impact still lives on. Uh, but Albanian culture also lives on too. Cree culture as well from Utulibi. And then American culture from my boys in the Rocky Mountain Rangers, as well as Atlanta from over here. And what else? Got some other native cultures like Dakota, Salish, Blackfoot, Kiowa, Shoshone, Wichita, Pawnee. Uh, oh yeah, the, the culture of 3488, Mashrik. And then Serbian, what else do we got up here? Oh yeah, Italian, because Koryak had a, had a colonial, nation, or colonial nation over there. And then Neapolitan, because hey, colonial nation. Or no, there's, uh, there's not enough there. So it's just Salento's colony. Why is this black? I guess it's just because it's December. But uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these uh, these statistics. Obviously I'm not going to do all of, the, all of the statistics, but we'll take a look at some. Most techs, because I don't think we reached the end of the technology tree, but... Uh, Li Yue, as well as Semyon and Malta, were the furthest ahead. 37-37, all across the board. Yep. Followed by the Papacy, and then Sumeru, and then Fontaine and Mondstadt. Who had the most idea? Yeah, everyone's maxed out on ideas. The most power projection. Sumeru, followed by Mondstadt and Volmoneria. And then after that is Colombia, Li Yue... And then Satavahana. How how you got power projections? Oh, you humiliated my child, you little shit. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to save this category for when I tally up the stuff, but I think we already know who won that category. I think we already know. Maximum manpower, who this is like your potential, uh, if your reserves are fully stocked. Obviously, Mondstadt's going to win that, but in second place is Sumeru, third place is um, uh, America, and fourth place is Livonia, followed by Lebanon. Part two is not too far behind uh, Lebanon. Uh, let's see, government. Who has the most administrative efficiency? Yeah, everyone's at 90. <laughs> or at least, like, the highest ones are at 90. Uh, maximum absolutism, the maximum level you can go for... Uh, I'm surprised Sumeru has the most absolutism. Followed by Fontaine, and then Livonia, and then Partu. I see you, I see you. Uh, I'm curious who had the sc highest score uh, through the ages. Who had, like, the most in the Age of Discovery? Mm, excuse me. So highest in the Age of Discovery was Japan, Shimabara. They, w they did win the Thunderdome. Uh, well, actually, Discovery was Japan, followed by Livonia, and then Mondstadt. Reformation was Livonia, followed by Mondstadt, and then uh, Salento. And then Absolutism was Mondstadt, Livonia, America. Enlightenment, Mondstadt, Part 2, America. Industrialization, same thing, Mondstadt. But this time, Lebanon, right? Yeah, Lebanon. As well as Part 2, and then Revolutions, Mondstadt, Sumeru, America. It does not surprise me, <laughs> Mondstadt leads most of that shit. Uh, who has the most, uh, can we see who has the most developed province? Let me see. Let me see if I can do this. Oh, not that. There we go. Highest development province is Leon. At 60 development, and the next one is Gurgenti in the Papacy, and then Lokyong in Liyue, and then Fez, and then Palermo. Interesting. I'm not sure if this is what people thought would be like the highest development provinces, but there you go. Leon can be attributed to Part 2 developing that. That's not really yours, Mondstadt. You just annexed it. Uh, let's look at some military stuff. We'll look at some army stats. Anyone with mercenaries? No one with mercenaries. I'm shocked. Most force limit. You already know who's at the top. Um, but after Mondstadt, for 
who can who could possibly field the most troops is uh, America, Livonia, Part Two, uh, Sumeru, and then Lebanon. I have to, I'm gonna keep some of these stats a secret because I am gonna look at them uh, when I do the campaign awards. But you know, I, I I will show you some of them. I'm not doing discipline this time around. So who has the highest discipline? Uh, what? Is a con still independent? They are. A con land is still independent somehow. Um, so they have 140% discipline, followed by Mutapa, uh, and then America at 132% discipline, and then Akechi, 131% discipline, and then Takigawa, and then the Papacy, both at 130% discipline. Uh, who has the most siege, or siege, not siege ability, siege ability? Uh, Fontaine, followed by Iran Shahar, then Toyotomi, and then Lebanon and Armenia. Highest defensiveness. It is Armenia, followed by Partu, followed by Sulaset, and then Ihri, and then Lebanon. And who has most army tradition? Uh, it is Dundar, Salento, and then Shimabara, or Japan, whatever you want to call it. And then followed by Monstat, and then Partu, and then Sumeru, and then Koryak. Um, I'm not sure which Koryak you want to say that, like Koryak number two, or whatever. I need to drink some water, my, my throat is dry. Oh my goodness. And uh, I guess we can look at, let's look at economy. Or, I mean, it's kind of hard to see, but I guess I can call it out. I uh, just want to make sure I'm not hitting anything from the... Okay, I'm not. So who had the highest uh, income from taxation? Other than Mondstadt. Um, and second place is America, followed by Sumeru. And then who had the highest in trade? Again, it's Sumeru and then America. Surprisingly, Fontaine made a lot through trade. That, considering Fontaine's position is like right here in the Caribbean, and they don't hold as much as I thought they would. I'm surprised they're making that much off of, off of trade. Who is making the most off of precious minerals, though? Colombia, followed by Sula Set, and then the Rocky Mountain Rangers. Huh. I guess they are in charge of gem production. Uh, I guess I'm not gonna call out the uh, like the uh, this part, but you can see for yourself who is the production leader for uh, these various these various trade goods like amber being produced amber apiculture and then beer uh, the lead producer is Mondstadt but like camels the lead producer is Semyon cannons Mondstadt um, but car carmine dye is uh, the lead producer is Japan fucking what else do we got here Cigars, of all things, cigars are being produced by no one, actually. I'm surprised. Cinnamon is being produced by Liyue. Citrus is being produced by Colombia. Uh, your lead producer of coal is, of course, Mondstadt. Uh, your lead producer of, say, coffee is Brazil. Your lead producer of ebony is Sumeru. Your lead producer of fish, Mondstadt. Your lead producer of fur is Mondstadt. Jesus Christ. Bro, Mondstadt just, like, they have a monopoly on the world market. Does this surprise anyone? But, yeah. This is all of the, uh, all of the trade goods, as well as who leads what. Ihri actually leads in livestock and llamas. I guess no one no one is producing llamas. Never mind, but they are the lead producer of livestock. That's cool. Hawaii. Oh no, I, I keep thinking like the, if there's a flag there, they must be producing it. But no, they're not. Anything with like a ne with a minus next to the zero, no one is producing that. Metalworking though is the lead producer is Fontaine. That's pretty cool. 
the fact that like basically if you're if anywhere in the world if you want some metal working done you're gonna be buying it from Fontaine mostly who's supplying the world with opium yeah you know that's Sumeru you know that's them olives are being supplied by Su La Set uh, pearls are actually being provided to the world by Hawaii uh, rum being provided to the world by Fontaine and then rice being provided to the world by Sumeru Bro, Sumeru controlling 66% of the world's rice production? That's a that's a little insane. Uh, part 2, leading the way in the world's salt production. You know, I can imagine so, being that Part 2 was once a huge fucking power. They came back hard from being annexed by um, Akdemachi, only to be crushed time and time again by um, rebels in the Isles, and then Mondstadt. Yes, I understand it. Sea turtles are the lead, the lead producer of sea turtles is Hawaii. Let's get some conversation, conservationists against uh, Hawaii. Uh, seafood being produced by part two. And what else? We're almost to the end of this list. No one producing steam engines. That, that's a pretty good trade good. Someone should have been on that. And yeah. Tin is actually being mostly produced by Mutapa. I didn't expect that. Tomatoes. Maybe I'll make like one of these a category next time for uh, uh, what's it called? For for an award category, like be the lead producer in these trade goods or something like that. That could be interesting. But uh, yeah, those are your trade goods, and I think I think we'll 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 leave, we'll leave it off there for this campaign. The, uh, the only thing I, ha I have to send it off with is uh, the good old leaderboard. So, I'll read off this leaderboard one last time. And before I do, I just want to thank you all so much for watching. This has been a very fun campaign from beginning to end. And thank thank each I want to thank each and every one of you f uh, who's watching for watching every single part. If you did, it really means a lot to me. And if you participated... It means a lot to me that you even wanted to participate. Uh, you know, I do these campaigns just for the fun of them because I want to make some other people happy as well as uh, let uh, let my creative side show as well as I want to let the creative side of other people show as well. Uh, and this is just a cool form to let it all be front and center. So, you know, um, uh, each of these campaigns, it's each one is a little bit different. The theme is a little bit different. But the, the amount of passion I have for them has not dwindled at all. Um, despite, you know, things going on around me, sometimes I get a little burnt out with some of these recordings. But know that I still very much do have a passion for these. So thank you all so much for watching. If you watched every single part, it means the world to me. And if you participated and you want to participate some more, please, please do so. Um, I look forward to everyone participating. Uh, and getting at least like one or two submissions in. It's just really cool to see how creative some people get. Whether it's a historical nation, it's a world building nation, or it's a completely fictional one. A high fantasy nation. It's whatever. Bring your stuff in as long as, uh, as long as it's within the guidelines. It's all good. Anyways, with all that uh, lovey-dovey stuff being said. In first place is Mondstadt. In second place is Part 2. In third place is Sumeru. In fourth place is Livonia. In fifth place is America. In sixth place is Colombia. In seventh place is Semyon. In eighth place is Lebanon. In ninth place is Shimabara. In tenth place is Sulaset. In eleventh place is Fontaine. And in twelfth place is Li Yue. That'll be all for now. Thank you all so much for watching this Campaign 10 Divine Fervor. I will see you all in the next campaign.